there are different types of spokes and nipples. Nipples are the part that stick out from the rim and screw into spoke. You can get them in brass or aluminium, with the latter being more popular these days. Aluminium nipples are fine, especially if you use a high spoke count, but they can fail due to um, fatigue and corrosion. For a more bomb proof solution, you can get brass nipples. They are a little heavier, but for adventure riding, reliability is key. The next important part for a spoke selection is the actual thread diameter. The most common thread diameter is 2mm or M2, uh, but you can get a 1.8mm and just make sure your spoke and your nipple are compatible because uh, like uh, a 1.8 spoke will screw into a 2mm nipple but obviously over time it will fail. You, you probably don't need to worry about this too much as normally there is uh, the nipples are supplied with the spokes but say if you want to upgrade to say brass nipples then you just, you just need to be aware of what thread your spoke is. Spoke nipple length normally is about 12mm 12 12 uh, total length with 9mm of that being thread length. The extra 3mm is bored out just so you can couple the threads with the actual spoke. And I'm going to show you what I mean here. If you can see here, threads are in there and it's a board section. So you can see the threads actually go in into the nipple hiding the ugly threads. Okay, you can use longer nipples, um, but on these occasions you should take into consideration the actual thread nipple length. If the thread length is more than 9mm, uh, then you will have to use shorter spokes. And also, don't assume that longer nipples automatically means that you have a longer thread. Some nipples just have longer bore section. So just be, be aware of that and make sure if you're using a longer nipple and if the thread length is longer, then you will have to adjust your spoke length. So if you have a 12 mil thread length in your nipple, you will have to reduce your, your spoke length by 3 mil. Don't buy longer nipples just for the sake of it. The only real reason you'd buy them is if you're already using carbon rims and with a really thick wall. Um, another reason is you can't get the exact spoke length that you need. Uh, then you can have a longer nipple to make up the difference. But again, make sure the thread is longer, not just the nipple. Spokes. So spokes are just little rods that all the way together, not much to them, right? No, well, that's what I thought, but there's a lot of these little buggers from ECI. And uh, not all spokes are created equal. Obviously, you get you get what you pay for. If you're going to go a cheap brand, you're going to get bad spokes. First of all, it's the material. Um, most spokes are made from stainless steel. This gives good strength and corrosion resistance. Cheap spokes can be made of steel and then coated with chrome, but obviously these are much weaker and will rust over time. Titanium rods are another great option. Um, if you have the extra cash, they are a lot more expensive. The only downside to using titanium is that you will have to use brass nipples. So if you, if you that weight saving with the titanium is counteracted because you have to go with brass. But saying that, if you were going to use brass nipples anyway, this will make a bomb proof set of wheels. Titanium rods, brass nipples, it's going to give you great comfort and will be very reliable. Um, some people ask me about the spoke gauge. This basically means the diameter of the spoke. Most people don't use gauge anymore. They will use the actual size in millimeters. A 13 gauge is 2.3 millimeters. A 14 gauge is a 2 millimeters. A 15 gauge is 1.8 millimeters. And a 16 gauge is 1.6 millimeters. Next up is spoke profile. A straight gauge spoke is a simple spoke that has the same circular profile from the hub to the rim. Blade profile are the most aero of all spoke designs. They have a flat section along the middle of the spoke and that slices through the air as it turns. The only issue I have with them is that they're hard to lace into the rim. A butted spoke. Butted spokes basically means that they have different diameters along the length. A single butted spoke have a large diameter near the hub but taper to a regular size spoke for the remaining length of the spoke. This is generally used for bikes to carry heavy loads. You just have to make sure your hubs have a larger hose to accommodate them. Double butted. Double butted spokes are basically the same as a straight gauge spoke but have a narrower section in the middle. The common size is for 2mm on the other side and then 8, 1.8 in the middle. You can see this is one here. I don't know if you can see that. Put it down and put up again. Triple butted. This is a combination of the above but it has the 2.3mm uh, section at the hub, tapers down to 1.8 along the length and goes back up to 2mm near the spoke. Ah, sorry, near the nipple. These differences along the spoke have been created by a method called cold rolling. 
by using this method, they, they can achieve the same tensile strength as it would have been with a thicker diameter. And you just have to make sure when you're actually putting the wheel together, that when you're tightening the nipple, that you don't start to wind the spoke. So just be careful when you're twisting the nipple and screwing on, but you're not actually twisting the spoke at the same time. Next up, we have either a straight or J spoke. Um, so a J spoke will have a bend on the bottom of it, like a J, and a straight spoke will just have that, this section here on the end. So obviously it's, it's pulling straight. Um, some say that you can actually get more, you can actually get a stiffer wheel with a straight pull, but this isn't true. Um, technically you can pull more with a, with a spoke, but in regards to being in a wheel, both the J-Bend and the straight spoke will actually pull out the nipples out of the rim before they reach their tensile strength. It's inadequate really. Both the J-Bend and the straight bend are set to the same stresses. That, that leads me on to um, spoke crossing. So the spoke crossing is the amount of times the spoke will cross other spokes on its way from the hub to the rim. For example, a tree cross pattern will cross three spokes on the way from the hub to the rim. So let me just see if I bring the rim here. Okay, so this one I made earlier. If we follow so this book, we can see that it starts in the hub here. It crosses one, two, three other spokes as it comes out to it. It's possible to get a one cross, two cross, three cross, or even a four cross. What you really want is a four cross, which you can get it if you have a small enough hub and a big enough rim or ERD, which I'll speak about soon. You can go for four cross, but you just have to be careful. If you go for four, obviously the tangential angle will be greater. And I don't know if you can see what normally happens with a four cross if your hub is too big. Um, you can actually come across the point of the other spoke. You always should cross above it, uh, above this point here. If you start crossing underneath it, you, you have other issues. Three cross is probably the most popular. It gives you the most rotational strength. While at the same time, because the spokes are longer, you can have more uh, flex. As the more material there is, the, the more it's going to flex, um, which leads to a, a smoother ride. And the spoke length, now this is really, you, you have to choose your hub and your rim long before you think about your spoke length. You'll have, you will have to use a spoke calculator, just Google spoke length calculator and you'll see there's plenty. Uh, I will put a link in the description of the one I use. Basically, here you, you can simply pick the type of hub and rim. It has got a database of hubs and rims. You can search and choose the one you, you, you're using. On the off chance that it's not there, you can input the sizes manually and this will give you what length of, of hubs you need. If you do have to put in the dimensions manually, you will need to know um, whether or not you're using disc brakes or not. You need to know E or D, so your effective rim diameter. Um, this can be got from your supplier. You need to know your pitch diameter. Uh, so this is the distance between each center and spoke center on the hub. Uh, you, need to know, you will need to know how many spokes you intend to use and you will need to know your spoke cross pattern. 